Okay, so we are going to build a phylogeny from the table that we have in front of us, which is called a character matrix. And so when you see a character matrix, it's a table, obviously, and along the table we have two different things. We've got characters, which you'll see right here, and we've also got our taxa, which we're displaying right here. And it doesn't really matter which row they're, or column they're on. So we could potentially have our taxa listed up across the top and our characters in a column over on the left, and we're still gonna have the same kinds of data. So in this example, I've got characters where they are and taxa where they are, but again, we could have it flipped and we'd still do everything the same way. And so whenever we looked at these character matrices, the goal is to create our phylogeny, and we need to know what order to put these taxa in. So to get us started, we're going to look at each of the taxa, and we're gonna add up how many characters each one of them have. In these character matrix, in this example, the X means they have the character. If there isn't an X, it means it's absent. So for the first one is taxa A, and for taxa A, they have got one character. So I'm just gonna say one. Taxa B has got two characters. C has got three. D has got four. Oh, excuse me. Uh, taxa B has got two. Taxa C has also got two. D has got three and E has got four. So we've got our list of characters inside of our character matrix. So when we go to make our phylogeny, and this is important, this is a way that a lot of people will mess up, is how to actually draw the phylogeny. When we draw our phylogeny, I always start with just one big broad line, and that represents the one that's going to be on the end. And then I just add slashes for the number of taxa that I have. So in this example, we've got five taxa. So this first line is the first one. Now, two, three, four, five. And that'll get me started. And so to now put them onto my tree, I am going to figure out which one goes over here and is the most ancestral or the oldest taxon. And then over here, this represents the two that have evolved most recently. And the assumption we're gonna make is that once you gain a character, you keep the character, you don't lose it. So that means that if every time a character shows up, we don't lose it, then if you only have one of the characters, you must be kind of old compared to another taxa that has four characters. Because we assume that if you have four, then that means that you're gaining these things and you evolved after the ones that came before. So if that's the case, then the oldest one is A, because it only has one of the characters. B would come next because it's got two. C would go after that. D would go here, and then taxa E would be over here on the end with four of the characters. Now you might notice right away we actually have two taxa that have two characters. We've got B with two characters and C with two characters. And so I could also do a tree where it's one, two, three, four, five, and I've got A at the bottom, and then C, and then B, and then D, and then E. And at least in this example, I don't actually know which one of these is right, because either one would basically say the same thing. So I'd need more information. The other way we could potentially do it is let's imagine we've already got our tree, and we want to build our character matrix. That's the other way around. And so we've got to look and see which taxa have got which characters. And so the way we read these trees is we, again, we assume that whenever a trait evolves, or it shows up on the tree, it's not going to be lost unless we indicate that it's lost. So in this example, tac, uh, character one evolves in the common ancestor of this entire tree, which means that every single one of these organisms is going to have character number one. So I would go over here, and for character number one, I'd say everybody has it. So I'd put ones to indicate they all have it. Character number two is here, right before B, and here, right before E. So I would say character number two is present in taxa B, it's also present in taxa E, but nobody else has got character two. So I'm gonna put zeros to indicate that it's absent. Character three, I see over here on this branch in the common ancestor of A plus B, that's where we see three. So that means A has got character three, B has got character three, but it's absent inside of C, D, and E. And you might say like, no wait, character three it's to the left of C, D, and E. So if it's to the left of C, D, and E, that means that C, D, and E one also, must also have character three. The reason why they don't have it is because it evolves after 
this branch in the common ancestor of C, D, and E has already broken off. And so 3 is present in A and B, but when it shows up, C, D, and E have already gone a separate way. In this example, character 4 isn't anywhere on the tree, so I would say it's absent in all of these locations. And so I've got zeros. Okay. All right. So the final, or perhaps maybe the, the hardest example you could be given, is one where you've got the character matrix, and we want to build our tree. But then at the same time, we want to map our characters onto the tree, saying, meaning that we want to indicate where each of those characters evolve. So to get us started, I'm going to kind of do all the skills that we've just talked about. So I'm going to go to each taxa, and I'm going to add up how many characters they have. So taxa A has got one. Taxa B has got two. C has also got two. D has also got two. And then E has got three. So you can see how this is going to be kind of hard. we got three taxa that all have got two different characters. So let's just get started. And again, you might have to redraw your trees a few times. Sometimes you might change your mind, and that's okay. So I've got five taxa, so I'm going to get started with a really simple tree. So that means I'm just going to go one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to see what this looks like. So character one is present everywhere, and the only, buddy, the only uh, taxa that has it is taxa A. So I'm going to start by putting taxa A right there. The taxa that has the most traits is E. It's got three of them. So I'm going to put E over here. Now I'm still left with B, C, and D. So I'm going to start to look and see, OK, well, what do B, C, and D have in common? What's true about them? And the first thing I notice is that C and D have both got character 2 along with E. So the thing I'm going to start thinking is that, OK, well, then character 2 must have evolved in the common ancestor of C, D, and E. So let's try that out. So if C goes here and D goes there, and the character 2 is right there, C, D, and E would have that trait. C, D, and E also have character 1, so I'm going to put it right there. And then character 4 is only inside of E. So I'm going to put it right there. So now I've still got character, or sorry, taxa B. And taxa B has got character 1, so I could put it right here, and it would have character 1. But it also has character 3. But it turns out it's the only one that has character 3. So that means that character 3 would not evolve at, the, at this branch that is before taxa B on the main line, the common ancestor. Instead, character 3 is only in B, so that means it would go right there. So now I'm going to go back, and I'm going to take a look and see what I got. So I'm saying that character 1 is in everybody. That works. Character 2 is in C, D, and E. That works. Character 3 is in B only. That works. And character 4 is only in E. That works. So I would say this tree is what you could build from this particular group of information. It's possible you could also have a tree that looks like this. Let's imagine that the tree goes like this, and now maybe it's like that, and that, that, that. Okay, and now it's like A, B, C, D, E. Four is over there. Three is right there. And then two is right there. This tree is honestly just as plausible as that one. Like, all of the character states are where they need to go. Oh, almost forgot about one. All the characters are where they need to go. Everything works. But we're going to go with the one over here on the left. And the reason we're going to do that is that this one is what we call the most parsimonious tree. In other words, it is the simplest. And so in science, we are going to assume that the simplest explanation is the most likely explanation. And so since this one has the fewest number of branches, there's no, it's just a straight tree with no sister branches coming off, we're going to say that this is the most likely tree. And so for our purposes, this guy is the best answer.